Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out Gaia, which is a terrain generation software and how to use it to create landscapes with an Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so first of all, if you guys have never heard of Gaia, it is a landscape generation software, much similar to World Machine, if you ever heard of that. And basically what you can create in Gaia are these height maps or terrains and you can use these height maps to import and create landscapes within Unreal Engine, which is what I'm interested in this video. Now there are obviously more things you can do with Gaia. You can, you can use it to render out images and stuff of like an environment, or you can just use it for height map generation for any 3D application. And the creators of Gaia is the company Quad Spinner. They were generous enough to send me a copy of Gaia to make videos about and show you guys what it's all about. Now, basically, you can try out Gaia if you want for free, and it's actually quite generous. They allow you to build a single resolution of 1024 by 1024, which is quite standard in Unreal Engine. Indie, which is $99 is the tile size is 4096 by 4096 so 4k landscape you can see here the differences and then pro you have unlimited for tiled build resolution so this is like if you're going to make a open world map and you wanted to use world composition or an unreal engine 5 world partitioner this is the version that you'd want to get and you have everything unlocked and then of course if, if you're working in a big company you would get the enterprise license but yeah uh, right off the bat though the community version offers twice the resolution than a world machine so I would highly recommend to at least download the free version check it out see if you guys like it but yeah anyways in Gaia the controls are pretty simple here this is still kind of my first time using this so I'm very new to all the different uh, controls and settings but basically you have your alt click your pan in and out and this is your landscape that you can create so down here is the node graph so much like world machine uh, if you've used world machine before you're gonna feel right at home because you have these different nodes and if you click on the node you can see the generator and so you can adjust things like this mountain node here you can adjust the scale so we can scale the mountain up you can see it's going to apply those changes and then we have erosion modifier applied to that so you can see the erosion happening to the mountain there so and you can adjust the erosion duration the strength all that good stuff very much similar to world machine on the left we have the toolbox so we have all sorts of different generators, presets, and nodes that we can actually drag out. So I could drag a Badlands node. And these are actually pretty cool generators. So you can see here, this is the preset. And you can change the seed so you get a different look every time. And basically, we can add in erosion. So you just scroll over to here. Or what you can actually do is right click and type in erosion and then hook the nodes up and then of course you can change the erosion settings if you want to give it less strength and a longer duration and then hit apply changes so yeah there are a bunch of different nodes and preset ones and and if you're more used to World Machine, they actually have the Geo Primitives. So this is like the Perlin, Veroni, all those different basic generators that you'd have in World Machine. Now, in addition to that, you have the Geo Primitives, like I mentioned before. So you have Dunes. So I can drag some of these out and show you guys what they look like. So I think this is really cool. You can very quickly get the desired look into your scene there and mix and match and create pretty much any terrain that you want. So we have plates as well. And we can again change the seed so you can get different different looks. 
And of course I can take an erosion, copy that over, hook that up. You can see what it kind of looks like. Kind of looks like a mountain range. Okay, and then what else do we have? We have a ridge. Okay, a crater. So you can adjust the depth, the inner scale and the outer scale. So yeah, there's just a lot of different options that you have. And then of course you also have your, your water, your coast, your lakes, all that good stuff. So I can drag out a coast here and hook this up. Actually, we might want to hook this up to our crater that we had. And we can create like a little island or something like that. And there's actually two different options here for this crater. We have a volcanic, so if we want to make a volcano, scale the height down. What we actually want to do is put an erosion in between this. So we get a more natural look there. And maybe it's a little bit too big, so we can adjust the crater scale. And then for the coast, all we need to do is see where our water is at. And we can increase like the beach size. But yeah, I'm still very new to the software. So I'm still trying to learn it all, but it's very familiar to World Machine. Anyway, so we got our kind of basic landscape here. What we can go ahead and do is when we're ready, we can go to the build. You have your resolution here. I'm just gonna decrease this to 1K texture, which is also the free version. The tiled output, this is if you're going to do like a open world map, you wanted a larger landscape. Then down here, what we wanna do is you actually wanna select our coast here and right click mark for export. And now what we can do is click start build. So you can see here, it'll build in our builds folder and then we'll start building out the height maps that we can use in Unreal Engine. Okay, so there's the height map that we have here. A very basic height map. There's only one layer actually in that one. And I can show you how to import this to Unreal Engine. Okay, so this is a new level here in Unreal Engine 5. So what you do is you go to landscape, create a new landscape, import from file, select the height map, and in this case, we actually need to export this as a .raw, of course. So actually here at the top, you wanna to change the format to .raw. You can also do .png, um, but this is for like the material layers. So anyways, we'll re-export that real quick. So now we can select a .raw file. Okay, and I'll actually just deassign the material so I have height map resolution here set to 1024 by 1024, which is what we exported as. And then I set the overall resolution here to 1024, but for whatever reason, it set it down to 1021. Go ahead and hit import there. You can see our landscape. See, it's a little bit low resolution, and that's because it's only 1000 or 1K. Um, but there it is. We can go ahead and assign our landscape material. And by the way, the landscape material that I'm using in here is actually in my UE5 tutorial for beginners. So I actually show you how to make the material. So landscape master material. You can go in the paint mode and select our own material there. So you can kind of see what it looks like. And again, this isn't the best auto material in the world, obviously. And we can actually adjust the settings. So if I open up my landscape auto material and make this a little bit smaller, we can change the blend radius right here. Which will kind of tell us how to blend at what height this landscape and where like the kind of like the grass will be at in accordance to the slope of the rock. Now again, this isn't the best example. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is import a different landscape and show you guys that. Okay, so we have our mountain landscape here. And basically what you can use with this erosion is you can actually export all three of these outputs right here. So you have a wear, deposit, and flow. So if we add out here a output node, we can show you kind of what it looks like. So this is what the height map looks like for the wear. This is what the deposit looks like. And this is what the flow looks like. So the flow map, you can use this for like a sand. And then here's the normal output. So your normal height map. So I've already gone and done this. So if I just import the files, Okay, so what I have done here is I've imported my height map raw file here. And then I've selected my landscape material instance. And you can see here we have all the different layers and we can actually set height map files for each layer. So in this case for the sand, I have the erosion flow. Then for the grass, I have this inverted texture of my height map that way I get everything in the black areas because if you didn't know if you had complete black like that and no information on that image the material is just going to be entirely black because it's not going to know which which material it should assign to that then for my auto material I have the erosion selected so this is the landscape auto material that I created again you can watch a tutorial on how to create that. Link will be in the description. And for the overall resolution, it's 1024 by 1024. And the scale is adjusted there. So if when I hit import, this is pretty much the landscape with hardly anything adjusted. So let me full screen this for you guys. Yeah, as you can see, it looks pretty darn good just from importing this thing in so yeah this is the erosion map there with that sand and again this landscape material is not the best material uh, you can definitely make a much better landscape material with more layers and more breakup but yeah there's the rock there But yeah, not bad. And you can always play around with the parameters. So for example, if I want to adjust the rock slope here, I can adjust the blend. So you can see here, I can adjust how much of the rock, how much grass should be on the rock. So this looks pretty decent right here. We're just negative. 13.4 but yeah overall this is and again this is just a basic mountain from Gaia all you need to do is export all three of these maps here the where the deposit the flow as basically a dot raw for one of them and then dot PNG for all of them and that's how you can import the height map into Unreal Engine 5. And I can give you guys kind of a scale here. So if I play from right here, I can eject my character. And that's pretty much how big it is. So that's a 1024 by 1024 landscape. So where's our character? Right, right about there. But overall, I'm pretty surprised with the, the capabilities of Gaia uh, because they actually have a lot more different height maps that you can export. So you can see here just, just from this erosion map, we're able to get these really realistic looks in our landscape that you, you really can't get like even from, for example, a landscape auto material which I'm actually using for the rock here. You can't get these 
little lines using a landscape auto material. The only way you can realistically get this is through is through a terrain generation program. So, but yeah, there's a lot more different options for exporting height maps. Like you don't have to export only these three. Like obviously you could add certain patches of grass and things like that. And Gaia is actually kind of designed around that. Uh, the creator's quad spinner was actually a company that they made a plugin around world machine. And the basis of the plugin was to take satellite imagery and create realistic colorations for terrains in world machine. From the plugin, they moved on to creating this fully fledged terrain program. And honestly, just from first impressions, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. And I'm pretty excited to mess around with it, play around with it, see what kind of landscapes that I can make within Unreal Engine. Obviously, I got a lot of work to do on making a decent landscape material. Now, I'm pretty excited to try and test out the tiled build options. Maybe I'll make a separate video going over the tiled build options here and testing out an open world map using Gaia and Unreal Engine 5's world partition. But anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. Just kind of wanted to test out Gaia and Unreal Engine to kind of show you guys the process. And again, if you guys want to try out Gaia for free, you can go over to their website, quadspinner.com and go to download and download their free version. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them in any way. They did send me though a copy of Gaia to make videos about. But yeah, the program is actually used by professional studios. So, so I believe the creators of Jedi Fallen Order actually use this in their game to create some of the terrains and landscapes. So yeah, I think there definitely is a lot of potential for this program and I'm very excited to see where things go with this but yeah that's going to be pretty much it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one